Gas metal arc welding is a process that uses a continuously fed solid wire electrode with an electric current and shielding gas to produce welds. Gas metal arc welding is one of the most productive processes used in welding today. It can be used to make welds in all welding positions. It's useful on materials as thin as sheet metal and on metal sections up to several inches thick. The process can also be used on a variety of metals. But since gas metal arc welding is most often used on mild steel, exercises in this series will include the use of mild steel workpieces. In this program, we'll examine the gas metal arc welding process and we'll look at the effect of various filler metals and shielding gases on the finished weld. MIG is everywhere too because you can, it's, it's very, fairly transportable, even though it does require gas, which might be a little more expensive, but MIG can be used for heavy applications, thin applications, but still give you the nice appearance that most people want. One thing I've realized is that job security means a lot. I look around and welding's everywhere. No matter where you go or what you do, it has to be here now and it will be in the future. Therefore, going into the welding field is almost like saying you have a job for the rest of your life. Developing a highly marketable skill is a good reason to learn how to weld. Let's get started looking at some of the facts you'll need to know about gas metal arc welding. According to the American Welding Society, the proper description for the process we'll be discussing is gas metal arc welding. But on the job, you may hear the process referred to as MIG, or metal inert gas welding, MAG, or metal active gas welding, and wire welding, which refers to the continuously fed wire electrode at the heart of the process. One of the contributing factors to the popular use of gas metal arc welding is the fact that it can be used to produce long, continuous welds. Because the gas metal arc welding filler metal is continuously fed through the welding gun, the welder does not have to stop and change electrodes as is required with stick welding. As electrode wire is being fed into the weld pool, metal is melted and transferred onto the workpiece. The process in which this metal transfer takes place varies depending on the current settings. There are four gas metal arc transfer modes, short circuit transfer, globular transfer, spray transfer, and pulsed arc transfer, which is a specialized process combining globular and spray transfer modes. By far the most common transfer mode, and the one primarily featured in this program, is short circuit transfer. It can be used in all positions and on metal thicknesses ranging from 24 gauge to 1 quarter inch. Globular transfer is rarely used. Each time a globule transfers, there's a popping sound. Spray transfer is used on thicker metals when high deposition rates and deep penetration are required. To improve weld penetration, it's used with gas mixtures of 95 to 98 percent argon and 2 to 5 percent oxygen. The spray transfer process is very hot and virtually free of spatter. It creates a distinct low hissing sound. Because spray transfer produces a fluid weld pool, it is limited to flat and horizontal positions. Welding jobs vary in the types of metal, metal thickness, welding current used, and in the position of the weld. But evaluating and protecting yourself from hazards always involves the same considerations. To work safely, it's important to understand how you can get hurt. Every shop has general safety rules, and these rules apply to welders. Among arc welding hazards are several to which you should pay close attention. First, because this is an electrical welding process, electrical shocks are a hazard. Since resistance across the arc generates extreme heat, burns from the arc or from hot metal are a constant danger. Also be aware that sparks can ignite combustible material in the weld area. It's critical that the area in which you weld is free of materials that could burn or explode. The light of the arc can burn unprotected eyes and exposed skin. Finally, the smoke and fumes can be harmful. 
Depending on the type of material you're welding on and the size of the work area, special ventilation may be required. The welding environment can be very noisy. There are two ways of protecting your hearing from high sound levels. Ear plugs can be disposable or reusable, and when placed in the ear canal, protect a welder's hearing. Ear muffs cover the entire ear and shield against both noise and burn hazards. Appropriate work clothing is required in any industrial environment. But in a welding shop, to protect yourself from burns, clothing must provide as much coverage as possible. It must be made of material that is tightly woven to block out light. It also must not burn easily. Synthetic materials should always be avoided. 100% wool or cotton is a good choice. Cotton material is the most popular choice. A proper welding shirt must have long sleeves to protect your arms and have a high button collar to protect the neck. It must be long enough to be tucked in. Shirt pockets should be removed or have flaps. Pants should be straight-legged and have no cuffs. They must be long enough to cover the top of your work boots. The best footwear is high-topped boots with steel toes. The toe should be smooth to prevent sparks from getting caught in the creases. To protect your hands, all gas metal arc welding requires the use of leather gloves. A welder's cap is worn to protect against flying sparks landing on top of your head. In addition to appropriate general work clothing, on jobs that produce a lot of sparks or for out-of-position welding, welders often wear special protective clothing. Special protective clothing can include a full leather jacket, a leather cape or apron, leather sleeves, and leather pants and spats to protect the feet. On a shielded metal arc welding machine, the welding amperage is set or adjusted by turning a knob or dial on the welder. A welder can also modify the amperage during a weld by manipulating the electrode. Manipulating the gas metal arc welding gun will not affect voltage on a gas metal arc weld. The voltage remains constant once it is set on the machine. For this reason, this type of machine is referred to as a constant arc voltage or constant potential welding machine. A shielded arc welding machine, on the other hand, is referred to as a constant current machine. The amperage for gas metal arc welding is adjusted by increasing or decreasing the speed at which the electrode wire is fed into the welding gun. The manner in which voltage and amperage are adjusted is the primary difference between the two units. Some new electronically controlled welding machines have the ability to produce both types of welding arc voltages. These machines can be used for shielded metal arc welding as well as wire-fed processes. All welding processes produce molten metal. Molten metal is very reactive and is easily contaminated if it is exposed to oxygen and nitrogen in the air. In shielded metal arc welding, the vaporized flux provides a gaseous cloud to protect the molten weld from atmospheric contamination. With gas metal arc welding, an externally supplied shielding gas must be provided to protect the molten weld pool. The shielding gas is directed into the area surrounding the weld pool through the gun's nozzle. The composition of the shielding gas is an important controlling factor in the quality of a weld. Job specifications determine the appropriate gas composition based on its effect on the weld metal, bead shape, and welding position. The weld metal is affected by some shielding gases because they are reactive and burn out some of the alloys in the wire as it transfers across the arc. Weld bead shape can be affected because some shielding gases allow for more penetrating welds and others make the weld metal more fluid. The weld position is affected by a combination of penetration and weld metal fluidity. It may not be possible to carry a large fluid weld pool in out-of-position welding. 
The materials that make up the filler metal also affect the weld. Often, elements called deoxidizers are added to the feed wire. Deoxidizers can remove some of the contaminants present in base metals. In this way, they affect the weld strength and ductility. Some additives affect the weld bead shape. As the weld cools, they float to the surface of the molten weld pool and solidify, forming a solid. These solids are called glass because they are composed mostly of silicon. Other benefits associated with alloys include changes in the weld metal's tensile strength, ductility, elongation, impact resistance, corrosion resistance, or other physical properties. Gas metal arc welding produces less fumes than shielded metal arc welding. But since it's a process that allows longer continuous welds, the buildup of harmful fumes can be dangerous. Ventilation of fumes can be accomplished by using an exhaust system to collect and remove the dangerous gases. Gas metal arc welding uses a carbon steel solid wire electrode to weld mild steel. The electrode is continuously fed off a reel attached to the wire feed unit. A mechanical system drives the wire to the tip of the welding gun. The welding current travels to the gun along a copper cable inside the welding lead. Current passes along the wire as it travels through the contact tip at the end of the gun. When the electrode makes contact with the base metal, an arc is established to produce the weld bead. Some wire electrodes may look like copper wire because a very thin copper coating is applied as a lubricant during the manufacturing process. The thin copper coating protects the electrode from moisture, retards rusting, and improves the electrical contact between the wire electrode and the contact tube. The copper coating on the wire electrode does not affect its ability to produce quality welds. The amount of copper is so small that it either burns off or is diluted into the weld pool with no significant reaction. Specifications for the carbon steel filler electrode used with gas metal arc welding are found in the American Welding Society publication A5.18. Like all other filler metals, the American Welding Society has a standardized method of identification of gas metal arc welding filler metals. The American Welding Society gas metal arc welding filler metal classifications start with the capital letter E. The E stands for electrode. Sometimes the classification will be listed as ER for electrode rod. Next is generally a two-digit number, in this case 70. This represents the minimum tensile strength in tens of thousands of pounds. The number 70 indicates that a weld using this wire would have a minimum tensile strength of 70,000 pounds per square inch. The capital letter S indicates that this is a solid filler metal. Spools that hold feed wire are disposable and can be made from plastic, wire frames, or other material. The wire is wrapped around a central core and the sides of the spool hold it in place. Because the wire is contained on a spool, it is easily installed and changed. Spools come in several standard sizes, but the quantity and weight of wire on each spool can vary. Here are some general weights of wire that can be found on spools. Small spools can contain from one pound to several pounds of filler. Medium-sized spools can contain between 10 and 15 pounds of filler metal. Large spools generally carry between 25 and 35 pounds of filler metal. Coils must be mounted in a frame to be used. Coils contain about 50 to 60 pounds of filler metal. Shielding gases in the gas metal arc process play the same role as in other procedures. As the weld progresses, a gaseous shield is directed into the weld zone through the gun nozzle. 
This protects the weld pool from atmospheric contamination until the molten weld pool solidifies. The shielding gas is generally delivered from a compressed gas cylinder. This allows the process great flexibility. Codes and standards often dictate the composition of shielding gases for specific welds. Even when such specifications are used, the welder may have to choose the shielding gas within a range allowed in the specification. The most commonly used gases are carbon dioxide, CO2, argon, AR, and helium, H. Occasionally, a trace of oxygen, O, can be added to the mixture for making welds on some steel alloys. Generally, gases are combined to achieve the desired blend of qualities. The most commonly used gases for mild steel alloys are CO2 and argon, or argon-oxygen mixtures. 100% argon is not normally used for making welds on steel alloys. It is used on non-ferrous metals, such as aluminum and nickel. Adding small amounts of oxygen, usually less than 5%, to argon tends to stabilize the arc, promote favorable metal transfer, and minimize spatter. As a result, the penetration pattern is improved and undercutting is reduced or eliminated. Carbon dioxide may be added to argon in the range of 10 to 30 percent. Mixtures of argon with less than 10 percent carbon dioxide may not have enough arc voltage to give the desired results. Argon CO2, as I increase the amount of CO2 from 10 percent to 30 percent, I can change the way the wire transfers, transfer mode. And so 75, 25, C25, as it's called, is probably the most common mixture of argon CO2. It's not the only mixture, but it's the most common. Adding oxygen or carbon dioxide to argon causes the shielding gas to become oxidizing. This in turn may cause porosity in some alloys. In this case, a filler wire containing suitable deoxidizers should be used. By using the correct feed wire and a shielding gas mixture appropriate for the job, a gas metal arc welder can create the conditions that lead to a quality weld. Now let's review the key segments of the program. One, by far the most common transfer mode is short circuit transfer. It can be used in all positions and on metal thicknesses ranging from 24 gauge to 1 quarter inch. 2. Appropriate work clothing is required in any industrial environment, but in a welding shop, to protect yourself from burns, clothing must provide as much coverage as possible. It must be made of material that is tightly woven to block out light. It also must not burn easily. 3. Shielding gases in the gas metal arc process play the same role as in other procedures. As the weld progresses, a gaseous shield is directed into the weld zone through the gun nozzle. This protects the weld pool from atmospheric contamination until the molten weld pool solidifies. <laughs> 